Welcome to Endorphasmic, where we talk about all things endorphasm. I am your hostess, Erica Porter. Keeping with the endorphasm mindset and how powerful it is, that mind-body connection and how we operate differently when we empower ourselves and recognize what we are capable of. And movement really does that for us. But I want to talk about um, the mindset and the mindset as it pertains to failure. And failure is such a huge part of living. It happens to all of us. But instead of thinking of failure, think of lessons learned. Lessons keep us moving forward. When we accept what has happened, we learn to push forward. And those lessons are a part of the journey towards success, whatever that might be, and keep moving forward toward that end goal, even when other people fail to see your vision. Not everybody sees what you see. Keep moving forward until that end goal, even when other people fail to see your vision. Do that. Those lessons are the very engine of success, moving us one step closer to our greatness, our own greatness. And sometimes these lessons guide us to changing direction, and that's okay. But no matter what, you believe in yourself. You realize that success uh, success begins through believing in what you can do. Success happens when you don't let other people discourage you in your path forward. And our lessons are simply an opportunity to begin again, just a bit more intelligently. And your success is your ability to go from lesson to lesson without losing your enthusiasm. And I talked about grit and you know, not talent, but grit, that passion and perseverance. And that is how we are able to reach our goals despite the lessons along the way because we maintain that enthusiasm. And even if you've made mistakes, no matter how serious, there's always another chance and there's an alternative course of action. You just have to find it. And interestingly enough, I had a conversation the other day talking about um, climbing a 14-footer, which I had the absolute pleasure of doing in Colorado. And starting at 10,000 feet and really not acclimating um, enough. And so starting, and of course, I think I was... What was I, year, I mean, I was in treatment. I believe I was in treatment. But anyhow, that's really not important. The important piece is the fact that, you know, I set off on this journey to to conquer this 14-footer with Carlo and Carlo. And it was hard. And even from the beginning, you know, I was... I was breathing hard and it was labored and it was difficult and my muscles were screaming. And, you know, there were moments where I'm like, I'm not sure it's worth climbing up to the top of this peak. Um, You know, it's so beautiful down here too. And, but I really wanted to get to the top. I wanted to see what people, what what a handful of people are willing to, to kind of push to go and to see. And so I had been climbing and climbing and climbing and I get to the top and I'm like, wow, this is pretty spectacular. And then all the people around me are like, uh, this is a false peak, a false peak. You're not at the top. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, holy shit, there's still more to go. And it was a struggle to get here. And it's beautiful. Am I, am I satisfied with this view? Am I satisfied with the distance that I've gone and uh, the heartache, (laughs) not the heartache, but but the discomfort that I felt in getting to this point? And I was like, 
No, I want to see what the very few see because I watched people get to that point and turn around and go back down. And I'm like, I have not gone this far to only go this far. And there was more than one false peak. And you realize, really, that's a metaphor for life. And we're, we're climbing and it's challenging. And oftentimes, many people will turn around and go back down to where it's easier. And that discomfort is sometimes ugly and it's painful and it's, um, it's scary. And we get to these false peaks in our life. And it's a matter of, it's, it's not even complacency. It's just a matter of, is that enough for you getting to that point? Or do you want to continue and persevere with that grit and that continuation of enthusiasm? And when I tell you, when I got to the top of the mountain, I cried I cried because not only was it a physical feat to get to the top of this mountain, but I realized that it really is a metaphor for life. And, and, and I was going through, I, I had no hair. Um, I had just had a Zometa infusion, so my bones were achy. Um, and it was a true testament for myself to continue the path to maintain that enthusiasm and to really see the world differently all the way from the top and to know that even though it was difficult to get there, even though there were many times when I wanted to turn around, I didn't. And when I tell you that the view from the top was everything people had said it would be, it was breathtaking, it was beautiful. And there weren't a ton of people up there. There were maybe... I don't know, 16 to 20 people at the top of this mountain. There was snow at the top of the mountain. My son was there. My my partner in life was there. And we had all done it together. And it was um, life-changing, truly life-changing. And so when things get difficult, I think back to that moment. I think back to those hours of climbing and and the discomfort and realize that um, you just have to find your path and you have to have the enthusiasm to do so. And there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road and it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to get ugly and um, it's going to be scary. But holy shit, the view from the top is pretty spectacular. So with that, love, health, and happiness, and always much respect.